JQLM Radio, and we are here at the Bible Farm. And sitting with us, the incomparable. Hanging out. <laughs> hanging out. She she hanging out. Hanging out. Yes. I was the one of a kind. The one of a kind. I didn't, I didn't know, know I was incomparable. <laughs> she passed the superintendent. <laughs> oh, oh, she put it on. Put, put me in the coaching church. <laughs> Mr. Mervyn Seth, how are you, sir? I'm great, I'm great. It's good to be here. It's Thank you here. so much for ha sir, sitting with us on Wisdom. Mm -hmm. I've been waiting all day to tell you this. It's important. important. Let's see what you're telling. It's important. In yes. 2009, oh, Jesus. when me and Jesus became besties, oh, that's good. it was to your son and other words. Wow. So this yes. is like, yes. yes. I'm a yes. crying partner. Yes. In the car, just wait. Hold on. I'm a hold on. Can we do the like interview in before the you start crying? You're in the car. I'm, I'm gonna wait till yeah, I have to wait and cry. Right I'm having yeah. the personal summer. Y'all need to come on. No, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, we got to be happy. This is going to be a fun one. Say, it's real. We're going to talk to Eve when we get to glory. I will. That part. I'm so glad to be a man right now. I don't know what to do. Right, right. <laughs> So, we, did you just get here? Just uh, early in the day. Yeah. Okay. So, have you been in and spoke to the other No, no, no. I, mean, I flew in. I got up at 3.30 this morning to get here. Mm -hmm. Came here from Sarasota. This is the last day of a three-week trip. Okay. So, um, I leave here this afternoon, go back home. But, no, nah, you know, we just going to have a good time. The fellas and I, we just going to discuss things that uh, men need to discuss. Yes. Give them opportunity to ask me questions. Okay. about certain aspects of my life and how I overcame certain things and uh, I mean it's going to be fun, it's going to be a good time. And I guess that's what made, my name is Kimberly, yeah, I'm, Kimberly. Just, uh, I'm just so excited, I'm trying to come over the table, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to be fired. So good wrong. Okay. But, I know but I thank God because your testimony in itself and you're not ashamed to share your testimony because there is someone going right now through the exact same things that you have gone through mm -hmm. and your music, your ministry has helped them overcome that. And I just, it's its amazing to have a man of God that not only sings, but their life lines up with what they say yes. about well, I, I just think that, uh, you know, I, I understand my assignment in the mm -hmm. kingdom. I think, you know, for the most part, you know, when I look at, at the stuff that I've gone through, um, I think God really trusts certain individuals with trouble. Mm -hmm. And because he trusts oh, certain individuals with trouble, he understood and knew that once I came through it, that I was going to do exactly what Jesus told Peter to do, and that is to strengthen his brother. And so, you know, when you understand your assignment, you just do what you're assigned to do. You know, and I, I, I don't, I don't think that I'm any different from any other individual, other than the fact that I just made the decision to be transparent in certain areas of my life. And it's kind of hard in the social media age. Like y'all got these phones over my face. You can't, you can't, you can't live. You can't go through things like in in, in private anymore. You know, there, there was a day that you can, you know, you can uh, pull away, you can be reclusive, uh, but you can't do that no more. You know, you really have to just, you know, you have to live out loud, live in the public. And so, you know, people watch you, they pay attention. And uh, when you have a, a particular platform and a responsibility, um, you just got to rely on God and hopefully he'll give you the strength to make it through. And um, he always does, but sometimes you get through certain types of ways and sometimes you get through rough and sometimes you get through happy. But whatever it is, just get through it. You know? Yeah. That's it. Now Leo said her favorite song. Now I have a million of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, do. I have a million. But well, I think one of my favorites two of my favorite is King of Glory oh, wow. that you did with Kamal. Oh, I, I still oh, rock that. Oh, are I was you kid. serious? I was, kid. I was a kid when we did that. I think it was twenty that I think that was that I still that's rock that one. No, I still no, 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 I'm a man. I think it was twenty 25? Wow. So that's 50, that's a 51. So that was 26 years ago. Oh, man, I still, I still rock that one. 26 years ago. <laughs> and oh. not the time, not the place. Oh, so that was 20 years ago. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, how old was you back then? Two, four? Okay. Uh, let me get back. 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 Let me Absolutely. This is an awesome woman of God. An absolutely awesome woman of God. Bless you. And I think one of the things I asked you is what made you decide to, you know, we see about a lot of women getting together, but it is so wonderful to see our men getting together and standing up. So. Amen. Amen. Well, we started the forum, the forum in 2011, and it was really, honestly, I did it to get data for my thesis, for my master's. And then we, in bringing that together, my pastor at the end of that event said, you're on to something. 
And the whole thing was to bring men together to talk about father issues. And we actually met with women by themselves and then we met with men. And over the years, since 2011, the men kind of took over with just saying, can we do it again, can we do it again? Mm -hmm. And so in 2015, God st started dealing with me about having this men's conference. I'm like, I ain't got no men's conference. I'm a woman. <laughs> Let me find a man. And so one of the reasons I opened up with uh, Pastor Michael Jones' video, he did the last one I did in 2016. He really was behind me and let's do it. I'll just kind of be secretly behind you. But God told you to do it. And then we, as we know, he passed away in July. And so I didn't do one in 2017. It kind of threw me and I didn't do one. And so when we started coming into 2018, launching the publishing company and all of these other things and the Speakers Bureau, and God was like, you're gonna do that conference, Jonah Tate. <laughs> so I, I submitted to it and I have a passion for men uh, for, that didn't sound right it didn't sound right but the reality is is that that's a good thing <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, let's be clear. Okay. I, let, 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 let me clear that up a little bit. So I have a passion for men who look like my father and my brothers and my nephews. All right. And I absolutely believe that often our men, African American men, are hurting more than they know and we as women know because they just keep it moving. They got to they gotta take care of their family. Got and, I, and men come into the world, which I really believe we don't realize, they come in knowing they're supposed to provide, protect, instruct, and discipline. It's innately in them, but when they don't have the example. And so, so many of our young men are now adult men and we've witnessed it in these breakouts that they're like, that is a hurt that I'm still suffering with at 40, 50, 60. Paul's going to give his testimony. He was in his 50s when he realized he was still angry with his father. And the next day he went and went to breakfast with his dad. And now seven years later, he's his father's caregiver. But had the forum not happened, that door and opportunity wouldn't have opened. And, 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 I, and that's one reason why I appreciate you having the opportunity to be here myself because you know, I get the opportunity to share some things that pertains to my growing up and the things I've had to experience. And uh, even me being mad with my parents, you know, about breaking up and stuff like that. And my brother was 47, he still struggles with certain things that my mother said when we were kids. Um, so, I mean, you know, that's why as mothers, you know, y'all gotta watch some of the things you say you, your boys. Because yes, you, yes, you leave an indelible yes. impression upon them that could, could scar them, you know, into, uh, shoot, not just their adulthood, but into their, like, when they can think, AARP card. You know, so, yeah. so, yeah, yeah, we did all get that. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. I got my lashes. <laughs> Actually, two years ago. <laughs> As a father who is, um, uh, who is now a single, yeah. uh, a father, eight God rest your wife's soul, um, tell me what is, has been the greatest lesson that you learned growing up, and how do you um, apply that to this situation now? I don't know. I don't know. I think every day has been a lesson. You know, I, I had to, um, I thank God for Google. I tell, <laughs> I tell people Google is, is the next best thing to God. Um, honestly, it is. It's, 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 it's the closest thing to God. And, um, you know, raising girls, you know, my daughters are now, they're 19 and 21. But, you know, I grew up in a house full of boys. So, you know, there are things that I just didn't know about young ladies. And it was, um, I was on the learning curve through that whole process, you know. Uh, when my wife passed away, my daughters were 11 and 13, you know. You know the, 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 even the, the time of the month hadn't came to the house yet. Right. Oh, and right. it, it came right after, you know, like <laughs> yeah. my wife passed away one week and then next thing I know, folks getting cramps and stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like this is some foolishness. Like, <laughs> What the heck is a cramp? I never had, I never had to feel one before. I never, I never right. through it. Right. You know, my daughter's so coming to me. Daddy, 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 why don't you stop by the store? Stop by the store for what? We need you to pick up some things. What am I picking up? Yeah, listen, I don't even know how to go down that aisle. So I had to, <laughs> so I had to learn. I had to read and stuff to find out about heavy flow and overnight and all this kind of stuff. Right. Things that men don't, don't know. know about. So, so what I learned was, is honestly, doing this whole parenting process as a single father, you know, how to tap into that maternal side. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is, is that every man has a maternal side. And this is the reason why I know it. Because the Bible says that God put Adam to sleep. 
Uh -huh. And I'm pulling out of him uh -huh. to help me. Right. So there's a maternal side there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, just have it. to learn that's how it. to tap into that side. And, and you know, it, and like I be sensitive stuff. My daughter's not, you know, we, we're the coolest, like my middle child in particular. I mean, she calls me every day. We talk at least an hour or two. She gives me all the tea. You know, <laughs> I know that. Yeah, I'm her, you know, said tea. Yeah, <laughs> she gives me all the tea, y'all. So, so I'm her gossiping friend. So she calls me and gossips with her dad because she don't have a mother to gossip yeah, with. So she yeah. calls me, lets me know all the things going on with her little girlfriends down there and, and, so and Alabama stuff. are you stuff. able to reciprocate? Sometimes, yeah. Because, <laughs> and I, and I'm, I'm going to tell you why I'm able to because, like, I make sure I keep mental notes. Okay. So whenever she begins to tell me stuff about different friends, I can say, "Hey, that's so and so." So yeah, daddy, that's it. So so the conversation is always it's always flowing. It's always flowing. So um, you just got to be, you know, you got to tap into that side of who you are. And I don't know, you know, I uh, I like being a dad. I, I love being a dad. I'm, I'm, I they didn't need a mother because they had one. Yes. And a whole lot of people's like, "Man, why don't you get married?" It's like, for what? Man, I'm good. I'm just gonna focus on my kids and raise my children. And then once I get them to the place that um, they're whole, um, which is most important, then I, you know, I, I got the rest of my life to live. So you know, I'm, I'm good. I, I tell people, busy keep you out of trouble. So I just travel like crazy. You know? Well, you know, the last time we were at uh, Pastor Baboon's church, I think somebody said something about um, being busy, and I said, be purpose. Absolutely. Yeah, being purpose. Because yeah. you, we, everybody busy, and they yeah. got nothing to do with nothing. Yeah. No, 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 no. You know, it's the person that's like, oh, so Susie, you're natural. Can you be in my hair show? Being in your hair show ain't got nothing to do with my purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing to do with you being in your hair show. So, no. How well, about that? Well, I definitely function in my purpose. I yes, you do. I try to do all the things that, yes, you do. that I, I kind of lay my hands to and stuff. And like from writing books to uh, opening daycares to doing um, full service barber beauty, Manny Petty, some moms to have a restaurant. Being the president, founder of a charter school, establishing churches. And, I mean, I just do a bunch of stuff, and I do it just to stay busy. And uh, but busy as it pertains to purposeful. Yeah, right. Exactly. And, so how did you, your two purposes come together? She yeah. called a brother. I'm not that different. <laughs> <laughs> she had me to come. Yeah. I think the first time I came was for the black. Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> but she just called the office and stuff, and, and I came. I think the first time for Black Age Month. And um, then she came to my, my singers conference, I think, once or twice. Your prophetic Pro conference. Prophetic conference, yes. yeah, that was, that yes. was amazing. Yes. And we had a prophetic Jesus. conference in the month of January. The I can't believe that you uh, was a, in was freezing. Yeah, but in Michigan in January. Yeah. That's we had a crazy week. Got, yeah, you got to be a monster. Yeah. yeah, on the floor. I was yeah. on the floor. Everybody was on the floor that week. Yeah. yeah. It was kind <laughs> of, yeah. That, you know, I had one since. That's what they said. I, gotta I need one, you to though. do that. I know, I need to And I need you to do that singles conference, and I need you to bring me. I was going to bring it this year, but I back up. Because, you know, since Tuesday, been on her journey, and I've been faithful to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I told your assistant, I, I have a workshop called Shh, Single, Safe, Holy, Hot, and Horny. All right. Oh, that's real. That's real. Yeah, because they out of we out of order in the church. Go somewhere and sit down. You need to come and speak to that. Forget that. Yeah, let's do it. Let's that's do it. I am JQLM. Yeah. will be there in the house. Hey, hey, well, 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 yeah. But I do want the yeah, I took that one And so we all sh no, but you you got all that going on. Yeah. So yeah. Oh yeah, it's, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Mm -hmm. you know, it's er, 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 er church. Er, church. Er, church. Long skirts and all. Yeah. So listen, <laughs> I want to say this though about the man. <laughs> <laughs> Just take you long to get there. So <laughs> I'm here to help. You have to I'm saying. I'm here to help. Y'all know I'm here to help. So it's Tuesday real. So listen, this is what I did want to say about the men's conference. One of the things the Lord showed me was P I E. That fathers can be present but not be engaged and not be not be involved and not be engaged. Mm -hmm. Or they cannot be present, which means they're not involved or they're not engaged. In our household, my father was there, but he was not involved, he wasn't engaged. So even in that, we suffered a loss in, in knowing, having a relationship. Mm -hmm. If you ask, what, what's your father's favorite color? You don't know. What's your favorite food? What's your favorite movie? So a lot of times, particularly in this, this time, we think the relationship is because your dad, I'm child. Your mom, I'm child. That's not the relationship. No. Kids build relationship on these things, right? Yeah, here. it's crazy. And so you have to be intentional. You have to be. That's why I follow all my kids on their social media platform. Mm -hmm. I make sure that like, if I'm going to pay for your phone, y'all got to let me follow me. That's yeah. right. And it's something that we say on the journey. You cannot parent from the couch. You, you have to be an active Got to be engaged. Yeah, be engaged. Tell and like, I, like, like I fly, if they I, I build a house for my kids down in Alabama. So I get in-state tuition. That's smart. So 
my girls, I, I go down there once a month just to make sure that, you know, I'm engaged and I, you know, they, daddy is, is visible. And they want me to come too, because they, you know, they like, when you go, when you got to shop at Kroger's, you go to Whole Foods. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is here. Okay, that so is when here. we were in college, it was Steak and Shake in Wendy's. Girl, please. Right. Not right now. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm saying that was Them like, if they came. They grabbing shrimp and all kinds of stuff when I get to Wow. And I was like, y'all like Kroger's. Where you going today, Kayla? Kayla was like, I'm going to Kroger's, give me some um, steamed crab. I said, steamed crab? They steamed crab at Kroger's? She said, yeah, daddy. <laughs> you didn't know? Yeah. <laughs> really? How can you afford it? <laughs> right. right. Your college? Yeah. Listen, that's exactly what I'm saying. Exactly. Right. 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 But yeah, I mean, I, we went to, I went to well, Wilberforce. Work. Work. And when my mom would, that parents would come down, Wilberforce, she knows it's in the cornfield, mm -hmm. Ohio. So we would get be like, so your mama coming. Can I go with y'all? Where y'all going? Y'all going to? Steak and shake. See now, steak and shake though got a dollar menu. Yeah, they had that. No, that's hot right yeah, it's hot. Um, nobody got dollar menu anymore. Well, it's like a dollar twenty nine. Okay, oh, shut up. I'm just saying. They, 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 they got cars. <laughs> yeah. But see now they, you know, my kids, you know, when I went to school, you didn't have a car on campus. No, you didn't. The first two years. Mm -hmm. Right. Now yeah. she, my daughter got down there. And she said, "Daddy, just sit my car." I said, "You can't have no car." They said, "Yes, you can." She was a freshman with her car. Yeah. So then I was like, "This." They didn't gave up on all that. Yeah, they gave all this stuff away, but you know. It, it's, it's a new day, and I just think that if we pay attention um, like we ought to and, and be the parent that we ought to be, you know, our kids, are, the rest of their days will be the best of their days, and, that, and that's the goal, really. Mm -hmm. right. that's, that's been my goal. My son, you know, he took the long way. Uh, he started out at, at, at Morehouse, spent all his time in Spelman. <laughs> Did he find it? Just, you know, I had to bring him home. Oh. <laughs> he was finding too many of them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I brought him home, and then after I brought him home, he got him refocused. And then uh, now he's at Howard, he's about to graduate from Howard. Communications major. And then my daughters, they both at Alabama and m So, I mean, you know, it's been Black college, HBCU. Right. HBCU. Yes. They cost a fortune, though. Yeah, they do. Don't play. Ain't no, even, no I, I build a house in Alabama. So I'm going to stay tuition. <laughs> I'm saying it's, 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 okay. it's, it's, it's not explicit anymore. When, what happened was, is uh, I was down there doing a concert for the school, and I talked to the, the president of the school. I say, man, um, rather than you giving me the check, you just apply it to my daughter's tuition. She said, they can't do that. What? Couldn't do it. Um, because of contractual stuff. Right, so I right. said, okay, fine. Mm. I said, um, he said, well, if you was a resident in Alabama, or Marvin, you can um, get in state tuition. I said, explain residency. <laughs> what does that mean? I, I mean, that's exactly what I'm talking about. He said, well, if you got a house here, you pay taxes here, you know, you, you, you're a resident. I said, really? So if I owned a house and I paid taxes in the state of Alabama, I can claim residency here? He said, absolutely. I said, okay. The next day, I, I picked my daughter up. Not going again. Um, she said, Daddy, where are we going? I said, you said you wanted to stay in an apartment next okay. semester. We're not going to stay in the apartment. She was upset. She said, "Why? I just want to get in front of Daddy. I'm, I'm, I'm a couple class one on campus." I said, "No, no, I'm gonna buy a house." And she said, "You gonna buy a house?" I said, "Yeah, I'm gonna buy a house." So we started driving around, and I found this de de development. And um, because I looked at some houses that were, you know, they were already built with maintenance and all that kind of stuff, and I, I don't have the kind of time to be flying back and forth. Right. So I just built a house down there, and put them in there, like 1,500 square foot, all brick. Three bedroom, three bathroom, hardwood awesome. floors. Awesome, I know that's right. And it, and, it, and it didn't cost as much as they get. That's the reason why. It's I did. Alabama. Yeah, it's Alabama. I mean, my payment was like five hundred a month. Wow, so, yeah. We need that here. That's true. Well, it used to be Indy. <laughs> yeah. And, so, and no we want to thank you so much well, for excellent. your gifts. Thank you. Yes, um, we are all fans. I appreciate that. We appreciate you. Ministry being. partners. Yes, I appreciate yes. I'll take that one too. Yeah. <laughs> but we so appreciate you for sitting down and talking with us. Um, to everyone in Radio Land, uh, make sure you are following this man. Can y'all see him? Yeah, <laughs> at He's Marvin Sapp. Too. Follow Dr. Tate. At Marvin Sapp <laughs> well. on Twitter and Instagram, official Marvin Sapp page on Facebook. Mm -hmm. All right. So, JQLM Radio, we are live. Make sure you guys stay tuned in. Yes. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right. Thank you.